Good morning from and beyond Pinda Private Game Reserve. My name is Damon and I'm one of the rangers here. And today we're going to be taking a look at another animal skull to understand how the animal works. Having a look at this skull, it's quite a bit smaller than the other two that we've looked at in the last few weeks. But it's from an animal that is definitely no less special than the giraffe or than the elephant. And it's the skull of a lion. So one of the things that is most eye-catching about this lion skull, surely, are these enormous teeth up here in the front of its mouth over here. And these are the lion's canine teeth. And what the lion would have done with those is that it would have used those teeth for biting down onto the neck of its prey once it had actually caught it. And with those big teeth it would have been able to grip onto the throat of the animal that it had caught, like maybe a buffalo or a zebra or a wildebeest. And once the animal was dead, the lion may have wished to have dragged the carcass away from the hillside. Maybe to go and hide it under a bush where things like vultures couldn't see it, where they might attract the attention of hyenas or other lions or other scavengers. So with these big strong canine teeth, that lion would have been able to drag even a big heavy animal, like I said, like a buffalo or a wildebeest, would have been able to drag that carcass underneath a nearby tree to keep it safe. But also, a very important use of these teeth is because they're in the front of the mouth, they're the teeth that are most obvious. And so a lion will bear those teeth and show those teeth to a threat, like an approaching lion maybe from another pride, or even just an a lion of its own pride, just to to warn it to say, don't come any closer, I'm not comfortable with you being here. So, very important, both from the point of view of killing its prey, but also in terms of its communication with other lions and with other animals. And at the back of this lion's skull, it's got very special molar teeth, that if I run my finger along the edge of them here, they're very sharp. And what the lion would do with these, is this is the, these are the teeth that the lion would use to eat. So what happens is that when the lion chews, these bottom molars and these top molars basically work against each other like a pair of scissors. And so, the, so the two sharp edges go past each other and this will enable the lion to cut the meat away from its prey. So that's why whenever you see a lion feeding, it always turns its head to the side so that it can use those back teeth to cut away the flesh from the bone. Another very important feature of this lion's mouth would have been its tongue. And that would have been found here on the bottom jaw, in between the teeth of the bottom jaw. And this lion would have been able to use its tongue for quite a few different things. Talking about feeding, I don't know if any of you have felt a cat's tongue and how rough it is. Just imagine the tongue of a cat the size of a lion and how rough that tongue must be. The lion's tongue is covered in very small little hooks or little barbs and it will use that tongue to lick meat off a bone or to get rid of skin on the carcass. Um, but then also after feeding, they'll use that tongue to, to groom themselves and to groom other members of their pride. So they'll use that tongue with those little hooks to get bits of dried blood or bits of dirt out of their fur coat. And the grooming of each other, like a mother grooming her cubs or two lionesses grooming each other, that helps to build the social bond that is so important within a lion pride. Now, with such big teeth, there must be an incredible bite force that this lion is capable of. And of course, we've all seen lions busy feeding on a carcass and how they sometimes bite through some of the bones and even eat the bones um, as they go. And what's responsible for that bite force is the muscle that would have attached onto the skull here. And have a look here at this big ridge along the back of the skull. This is where all the muscles would have attached to the lion's head that would have been able to allow it to bite down onto its prey while killing it and then of course also while busy, while busy feeding on it. And when this lion would have been hunting, looking for its food, it could have detected its prey in a number of ways. It would have had 
big ears on the top of its head here to listen out for any sounds of animals moving through the bush. Also, have a look at the big cavity here where the nostrils would have been. So they also might have been able to smell their prey if the wind was blowing from the prey animal to the lion. But also, have a look at these big eye sockets here in the front of the face. First look at how big they are, which tells us that this lion would have had a very good or very good eyesight. And look at where the eyes are placed in relation to the skull. They are just like my eyes, facing forwards. And this would have given the lion a very good binocular vision. It would enable them to see far and also in good detail in front of them when scanning for potential prey. I hope that you've all learned a little bit about lions and lion behavior during the course of this video. Of course, one of the most important skills in becoming a ranger is learning how to understand animal behavior.